Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see my interview with Torsten Stenzel about the York classic The Awakening. But before we start with the interview, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and very important, also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. Alright, here it is, the story behind The Awakening by York, my interview with Torsten Stenzel. Enjoy! Torsten Stenzel is a German DJ, producer, composer and songwriter. He is active in the music scene since the early 90s and during the years he did hundreds of tracks and remixes. You might know Torsten mostly for the tracks he did under the project name York. But he's also responsible as producer or co-producer for acts such as DJ Saken and Friends, Tauke, DJ Tatana and some others. For example, these are some well-known tracks that have been produced or co-produced by Torsten. Nene by Nuke, More Than Words by DJ Tatana, Protect Your Mind and No Man's Land by DJ Saken and Friends, Did You Hear Me by Red Light District and last but not least the Tauke remix of Isla and Isla Part 2 by Isla. Torsten also did plenty of remixes for well-known artists and acts such as Moby, Fateless, Robert Miles, Tree Drives, Schiller, Mike Oldfield, Tina Turner, CM, Guru Josh, Scooter, Blank and Jones, Praga Khan, Nostrum, Culture Beat, Kai Tresset, R&B and lots of others. For this week's vlog I sat down with Torsten to ask him about the story behind The Awakening, which was the debut track of York, a project he started together with his brother Jörg. The Awakening became a big success all over Europe and it even reached the gold status in the UK. My first question to Torsten was around what age he started to listen to music. Uh, yeah, I would say yeah, roughly maybe with seven, eight years. Yeah. yeah. And do you remember some of the bands or the acts that you did listen to? Yeah, I mean, there was a completely different scenario because... Um, my sister basically was listening to a lot of reggae music and um, so I heard the first time Bob Marley from her which is a completely different genre but also she was like growing up in the hippie times and so she was listening to Pink Floyd and some other psychedelic bands so like some crazy stuff on vinyl of course everything and um, yeah she was kind of the first person who introduced me to those genres so it's a, it was a wild mix Yeah, yeah. but um, I can say I liked the reggae the most, funny enough, and of course I was impressed by all this psychedelic music, um, like Pink Floyd, Shine On Me, Crazy Diamond, stuff like that. Those were the, the first, yeah, songs that I really remember that made an impact. Yeah, yeah. So in the previous interview we did uh, about uh, the new classic Nana, you you already shared that you used to be a church organist. Um, so ar around what time did you start with uh, producing your own music? Uh, like professional producing, I would say I started with about eighteen. And before, yeah, I was doing playing at home with uh, some first Yamaha synthesizers that I bought. I had this um, DX7 since I was like 14 and I played around. But I realized, okay, then I bought a 808 drum machine and tried to sync it up. But it was a, a difficult time because there were no computers and stuff like that. So we had to use a hardware sequencer to make some music and it was so limited. So, yeah professionally much later but i was playing around uh, since probably 14 with yeah. synthesizers oh that's that's pretty early mm -hmm. yeah so so do you still remember your very first ever release yeah my very first ever release was this track contrast recall 4 so that was together with a guy called andre fisher mm -hmm. who kind of yeah invited me or i would say yeah we started a partnership and worked on on this track and um he used a lot of my sequences that I programmed and uh, then he started to add some stuff but that was definitely the first record that I didn't produce by myself but there was a lot of yeah. Torsten on this record so it like more techno or yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, for this walk, we're going to talk about uh, The Awakening uh, which was the very first ever release you guys did under the name York together with your brother York um, was it York? York 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 actually there's a funny story York so Jörg is um, his real name, so with the funny dots in German. 
but he has his had had his Russian um, work colleague, and uh, he couldn't say the er, New York, so he was always saying like York, York. And when we finished the track, um, I said to him, "Why don't we just call this thing York?" Because it sounds better than you know anything else, and, yeah, and yeah. I don't know if there's not an electronic uh, artist with that name, and yeah, that's how we started. Yeah. Oh, York, I, I like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. First things first. Um, was there anything that inspired you guys when you started to work on the Awakening? Um, yeah, basically, I wanted to experiment more with the guitar and trance because um, before I had some first steps with Taucher together where we're throwing some guitars on, on tracks. And I really liked it because I told you before, um, I was listening to Pink Floyd. So I always um, liked the idea of having some real guitars on the trans track or trans backing to yeah put some organic elements in it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that was the original plan. We sat there and it was like, you know, let's let's just try something on that on that melody that on that on that bass that I had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of the guitar, uh, on Wikipedia I, I found um, it became the first trance track that had the electric guitar as the lead instrument. So, so it was a real guitar. Yeah, yeah. And I was yeah. you or your, your brother or my brother, my brother. Um, so I studied piano, so and organ, but he was a guitar player. Yeah. So um, yeah, I basically had this very rough backing track, and he came up with this with this melody. And I was like, oh my God, it's so good. It's so dreamy. And it's exactly what I wanted. Uh, we wanted to create like, um, like a chill trance track. Like, I mean, later on they called it Balearic trance, um, but we didn't know it's Balearic trance basically, which is a whole own genre. Um, but um, I had this idea, like a song that you can listen on the beach and... <laughs> And, uh, you know, when you're on vacation or when you want to chill. So not kind of a nerve-wracking full-on club track. Mm -hmm. More something that, yeah, you can dance to, but it's also chilly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And has a chill factor. And, um, yeah, that, that was the idea. And then we created Awakening. Yeah, yeah. So can you tell a bit more about the production process from the Awakening? Um, production process was usually I start with um, when there's no ideas melodically it's either I start with with melodies and chords or a vocal but when there's nothing there sometimes I start just with drums so I was building a simple drum loop and at some point my brother grabbed the guitar and he started to play this dong 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 this kind of rhythm the the, the awakening picking guitar as this guitar this does his plucks and mm -hmm. so he played he played this plucks on it and then That was the first thing I recorded, so the melody came later. So once that plaque was sitting, um, he started to frickle with the notes, and then suddenly it came, ding, da, 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 da. and I was like, oh, that's catchy. Yeah. <laughs> Let's stick with that. <laughs> but what, what kind of equipment was used for the track? Um, this was fully analog recorded um, back in the day. I mean, it's it went on a tape machine, and... Um, over a big board so there was no no not much computer hard disk recording involved and i remember i said i already had um a, a sequencer i used back in the day yeah it was cubase actually and was running on i think an atari was it atari no it was one of the first better apples mm. and um Then I, I used some Roland synthesizers. <laughs> so I remember the pad is, was from a Roland synthesizer called JD800, which was the first um, virtual analog synth with like lots of buttons. So when you see them today, they look like a dinosaur because they are giant and like almost like this big MOOC things. They have like a button for everything and a fader. And of course, I loved that because I could change everything without going through multiple menus mm -hmm. like on the racks you know were like crazy and yeah so it was a analog feeling but it was not an analog synthesizer and there's a lot of jd 800 roland on this one ah nice so what, what was the most difficult part of the production um the most difficult part mm. i i don't think this anything was difficult with the song it just went nice ha, that's i i 
I don't think that necessarily a song that's hard work is a good song. So it's I think it's more like a song that goes easy and good and has a nice flow. Yeah. Those from my experience are the ones who are better at the end. But I mean it's everybody works different. Yeah. So how long did it take you to finish uh, the awakening? Awakening was probably yeah, one and a half days, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean I, I started one day and I finished it the next day. Of course you I did different versions. Um there's um different mixes. So I, I tried something with more intro than no intro. And um, yeah, of course, you wanted mixable, so I had to start with a kick drum. The other ones, I, I didn't start with a kick drum, more like with this atmosphere in the beginning. So yeah, yeah. Ah, nice. So the awakening came out back in 1997 via Sogni Plasma, which was uh, the label of Tala 2 HLC. Uh, so was it difficult to find a label for the track? We had kind of a test pressing before um, that I released on my label, and funny enough, um, Tala heard it or played it. I don't, I don't remember exactly. And um, he fell in love with the track. And I mean, I can say clearly uh, it's his credit that he was pushing for it. So without Talar kind of discovering this track, it would have been never a hit. Yeah. yeah. So he was definitely a, a factor behind it. Yeah. So so besides Talar, which other DJs did support the track? Oh my God, Awakening got massive support. I mean, it's pretty much... All the DJs on that in that genre in that time, they would play it. For instance, in the in the beginning of their sets yeah. or at the end of their sets. And I remember I was in Ibiza in, at that time, and it was running in the global radio and stuff like that. So I was even listening on the radio to it. Oh, that's cool. And it was super, super cool. You know? yeah, so do you do you remember hearing it on the radio for the first time? Yes, yes, yes. It was like oh my god, I couldn't believe it's running in Spanish radio in Ibiza, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they just played it. And 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 I realized, oh god, this is going to be big. And yeah. And it became big. Yeah. Ah, good, good. So in 1999, The Awakening got re-released via UK-based label uh, Manifesto. Uh, in October, The Awakening reached the number 11 spot in the UK singles charts. So yeah, that's not bad for a track that actually was like two years old by then. Exactly, it was two years old by then. And then, can you imagine there was not really a vocal in it? I mean, it's kind of, in a small way, a Robert Miles effect, I would say, where you have like a song like Children who became worldwide number one hit without any singing in it. Yeah. And um, back in the day, we had those songs, and, and Awakening was definitely one of those yeah. who worked without any chorus and vocals and bridges mm -hmm. and, and vocals in general. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm kind of proud because um, yeah, it, it made it really high up in the charts, 11 for uh, instrumental. That's yeah. pretty impressive. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So do you have any idea how many copies of the Awakening have been sold uh, during the years? Well, I can't tell you exactly, but... There's an interesting fact that I saw on BBC Music. Um, so Awakening was credited in BBC Music um, as the single that sold the most units without reaching the top 10 in the UK. Oh, that's clever. Because it's stuck, stuck at 11. Yeah, 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 yeah. It yeah. didn't go in the top 10, but it's ever in the history of sales. Mm -hmm. in, back in the day, I don't mind shift now, or maybe it's shifted. But I remember I was um, on the BBC side because of that fact oh, that yeah. it didn't go top 10 with super high numbers. Yeah. Um, I would say the sales are in the region of maybe 350,000 yeah. uh, singles. Ah, good, good. During the years, uh, The Awakening has been remixed by people such as Quake, Haver and Hammer, uh, DJ Shah, and you did a new version uh, yourself as well with uh, DJ Talkuk. Uh, there's also a vocal version with uh, vocals from singer James or McKenzie. So do you have a favorite version of The Awakening? Oh, that's a hard one. I I would say my all-time favorite version um, is the original mix. Yeah, yeah. Because that has for me this full-on Balearic feeling. Um, it's also the less, the least club playable one. Mm -hmm. But it's it was never planned as like a, a club banger. Yeah. This is where the Quake remix came in because the Brits thought, oh, we need something more banging. We love the melody. But we want like a full-on trans banger, and then the Quake remix was released, and that was the one pushing the UK sales. But um, to be honest, that was never my favorite version. No. I know that, yeah, pretty much the English fans all say the Quake version is their the version they love the yeah, most. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, not for me. Yeah. So, which version do you play your sets? Um, funny enough, I play um, a new remix um, from Energy Tracks. Which I think has, you know, energy tracks, those guys do like um, retro sounding mixes. So 
Um, that's the one I played at Luminosity, for instance, and people loved it because it has a lot of energy and it's pumping, but it sounds more like the old mix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what is your favorite memory when it comes to the release of The Awakening? Um, my favorite memory was probably when I saw it the first time in the club and then what it does to people. And I also remember it was released in Germany and they made a little trailer because it was on a compilation called Dream Dance, which used to be massive. Oh, yeah, massive. Yeah. And suddenly I'm watching in the evening television and I see this this amazing speedboat with a fisherman. I mean, like, like a like a wooden speedboat. And he's kind of throwing the net or something. So he's, he's going over the waves. And I think it is shot in the Fiji Islands or something. And then Awakening is playing. And there's an original um, trailer made back in the days that Sony made for, yeah. for it. And yeah, then I was like, oh my God, I love that picture from the, this boat going for the waves mm -hmm. and the awakenings playing to it. Yeah, ah, that's pretty cool, that's pretty cool. You're active in the music scene for a very long time already, so what are you working on right now? Um, well, I've never really stopped, stopped, but I would say um, particular after 2019, 2020, when Corona was kicking in, um, I'm back on track, full on with production. So. Um, there's more music coming out than ever. If you just observed last year and this year, it's it's really I'm really full on. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm working, of course, on York, um, and I also work on my own my own project. As well, my own project that sounds a bit stupid, but Thorsten Stenzel. I'm using my own name for, I would say, yeah, more faster trance sound. Yeah. And so I'm working on that on lots of different labels. My, my goal is to have everywhere release. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to, you know, spread my seats everywhere, my yeah. musical seats. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, so there's a lot of music coming on, on labels um, already. And there's even more coming in the next months. Okay, uh, good, good to hear that. Yeah. So uh, is your brother York still uh, part of the York project as well? He's on and off um, because he already... Yeah, left the project, I would say, actively in the early 2000s. And from then on, I took over. Yeah. Um, it was simply a time thing because he couldn't uh, really live up the music. Um, he had some live shows and stuff like that. And in the beginning, he was playing like festivals. And um, I was sometimes part of it, sometimes not. He did it by himself. Um, but um, yeah, that was going down. And, and then the sales went down as you remember in that time we talked about it um, yeah and so the decision came that he would have an ordinary job or something regular and I said no I, I will continue and I will push and continue to work on York and yeah that's what we did but sometimes he's he's on it he plays some guitars on it and um, ah good yeah, yeah. so yeah um The Stensel family seems to be very much into music. Yeah, so besides your brother, also your oldest daughter, uh, Jamie Lou, is a very successful artist. Uh, she's a singer-songwriter who works under the name Aura. And uh, people might know her from tracks such as uh, Panic Room by Camel Fat, uh, I, I Miss You by Jax Jones, uh, and Dark Side by Alan Walker, to name a few. Uh, of course, she's also featured on a few of your tracks as well. So are you planning on doing more tracks together with her? Yeah, I mean, uh, we always write together and we work together. It's it's just uh, naturally when we're together. At some point, we start making music, and um, I know I'm her, her her father and her dad, and it's maybe a bit weird. It's not the same if you make music and it's your family. Yeah. It's the same with my brother. It's a different kind of working yeah. than in a session with you know people you don't know that that good. Um, yeah, we will definitely always create music together i mean there's also new stuff we're working on or she even helps me with writing so when i need good lyrics or something um sometimes she helps me out and she writes top lines on on my music not necessarily sing it so so she's maybe not a feature but she wrote the song yeah so she'll like in the credits as a yes she will be in the, in the credits as a yeah, songwriter yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. nice nice so are still people you want to work with like uh, vocalists or other producers um, yeah, I mean, there's somehow I, I um, I'm interested, of course, in the the yeah the old guys. So I think 
the ones who are active and are still there. I'm producing music for, I think, 35 years. And um, I'm interested in, you know, reactivating those old connections. Yeah. So I always think it's it's a good thing. So I made a track, for instance, with Mauro Picotto. Um, that's going to be released soon. And I think that is a nice example of someone older that I always want to do a, re yeah. a record with him. Um, and there's other ones. Um, Ferry Corsten, I would love to do a track with him. Um, and yeah, I'm open to everything. But like I said, it's okay. I think it's a, it's a good moment to reactivate some of the older guys. Ah, good. Let, let's see what comes in the future. <laughs> exactly. So is there still something on your bucket list music-wise? Yeah, definitely. I mean, sales-wise and whatever, I had success. I had my sales. I maybe so, I have 100 million streams. So that kind of stuff, it's, uh, yeah, I'm satisfied. I won't had my gold awards here and there and But um, yeah, I think on my bucket list is more the DJ factor. So I enjoy um, touring, I enjoy small clubs, festivals, and just be a bit more active and on tour because you have to imagine I produced up to 15 DJs in the 90s and um, I was never in the clubs. I always was in the club, maybe on the weekend when I had some time. And then I saw, you know, one of the DJs that I produced playing but it was never me playing. So I rarely had a, a DJ gig. So for me, all this now is new that yeah. I can even play some old tunes that I make and I can see the reaction like for myself the first time. Yeah. And that is really interesting and new to me. And um, yeah, so I will definitely push on DJing more. Yeah. Okay, that, that's good to hear because I think it's been a while since you did gigs in the Netherlands. Exactly. How yeah, was it like? Like more, more than seven years ago maybe yeah it's been years ago well I played last year some little shows at the ADE and I think that's going to happen um, this year too and then of course I played now Luminosity yesterday and I will play it tomorrow on the main stage yeah. so and it's the first time that I played the main stage um, so yeah and the weather's going to be good so and the weather's going to be good and it's I'm really excited yeah. about it ah, good 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 and the last question pineapple on pizza yes or no Oh, no. No? No. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, thanks all for your time and good luck with everything. Thanks. All right, that was it. This week's vlog, my interview with Torsten Stenzel and the story behind The Awakening by York. Torsten, thanks all for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like. Leave a comment in the comment section below. And very important, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to click the bell button, because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. And I did another interview with Torsten, and in that one he will share the story behind On The Beach, which of course is another big classic by York. That interview will be online in a couple of weeks from now, so stay tuned. And you can already find another interview with Torsten on my channel. And in that one he's talking about the techno classic Nana, which came out under the project name Nook. So make sure to check that one out as well. Alright, thanks again for watching and until next time, bye bye.